My name is Jay White. Um, I'm a water ecologist. Um, I do quite a bit of work on local stewardship projects, especially around lake, the lake environment conservation sector. One of the things the organizers had asked me to speak about is impediments to stewardship. Certainly at a local level in this province, um, we really, really need a national GIS database. I know there's lots of portals out there, but when the, the rubber hits the road, Alberta's really lagging behind in terms of, of being able to get our hands on good spatial data. Uh, the province of Manitoba has put all of their spatial data online for free. The province of Alberta, in its wisdom, uh, takes that spatial data, uh, gives it to a private company that turns it around and sells it back to us. And there's often onerous licensing issues and that sort of thing. And uh, it's, it's, a, it's a really a problem, especially for the local stewardship groups. Unless you're aligned with some major government agency, uh, you're not able to get your hands on that data. Um, um, and it's caused all sorts of problems in terms of uh, licensing issues and, and ex expense. And uh, you know, like I say, unless you've got a, unless you've got a sympathetic uh, a PFRA or an Alberta environment, um, not only do they have to you know be sympathetic and help you out, but they have to have the staff available even help you use that data. Even lidar data is extremely still problematic. So there's lots of lots of that data out there, and we're just not able to get our hands on it. And that's uh, the, one of my one of my my big beefs in in, in terms of the stewardship side. I think there's still a, a, a lot of lack of experts, um, unless you've got, again, unless you've got a, a government folk uh, or an agency uh, person helping you out with some of your stewardship projects, um, you're going to have to pay for some of that expertise otherwise. Um, somebody actually said, uh, someone, I'm, I'm a limnologist by training in one, one of the lake associations, somebody came up to me and said, you're a limnologist? And I said, yeah. He says, you guys are like Jedi, man. Like it's hard to find you, and there's a small group of you. There's only four or five of you in the province, and it, it is true. I mean, there's there's this there's this lack of there's this lack of experts. We've heard all over all over the last three days about the fragmentation of roles and authorities um, at all levels, and and in terms of actions, in terms of funding, that sort of thing. So I'm not going to belabor that. Uh, the next few speakers are going to touch on that as well. Uh, budgets and funding, of course, uh, still big problems. Alberta environment cutback on the water side. We've seen all sorts of uh, provincial cutbacks. Uh, this particular budget was was particularly nasty. The watershed planning advisory council funding is down 30 percent this year. Water council funding was cut. Uh, the Alberta environment monitoring budget. There was a story in the Edmonton Journal about a month ago. Alberta environment monitoring budget for surface water in the province is going to be cut by two thirds. Um, you know, this is pretty alarming stuff. Um, we're trying to manage this resource and, and the, the dollars for monitoring and that sort of thing just, just aren't there. We love to build pipelines. Um, we will likely lose, in the next year or so, we will likely lose our summer villages. We will likely lose that, that, uh, that, that level of uh, local authority. And one of the things Lauren and I have been talking about, one of the speakers that had brought up is the, the boosters and stickers. And one of the things I, I think is, is part, of the, part of the reason why we're losing some of the stewardship ethic is this province is really a place where folks come to fill their boots and get out of Dodge and go someplace else. And then there's, there's just damn few people that are, that are actually from Alberta, understand, understand the, the, the province, understand the land, uh, respect the land, uh, have an ethic to, 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 to want to manage it and to want to do a good job with it versus the folks that are just you know, here for a short period of time and then off to Vancouver Island or off to Phoenix to retire. Um, so that's, that's some of the impediments to stewardship locally. What are some of the actions that we can do? Uh, one of the things I'd really love to see done in this province is dismantling this uh, this tower that we've created to to, to sell our, data, our spatial data back to us. You know that we've paid for as a taxpayer. So I'd really love to see the dismantling of the Altalis and spatial data warehouse that uh, we had created. I don't know, we created only about eight years ago or so. And I'd love to see us put all of our digital data back online where it belongs for everyone to use and, and actually contribute that to a national GIS database. Um, I see probably a federal partner helping us out and leading the way on that. Um, some of the folks doing the best watershed GIS work in the province right now are PFRA, uh, Prairie Farm Rehabilitation Administration, so the, the federal ag folks. Surprising that in this province I do probably more business with the federal ag folks and helping out my watershed groups get their GIS data than with anybody else. Um, I'll bet you on the Red Deer State of the Watershed report that we just completed, about $100,000 of in-kind time was, was spent doing that. Um, in terms of lack of experts, uh, we, need to, we need to do a better job of, of encouraging folks to be, uh, to be doing sustainability uh, training at the university level. Um, we've lost, just on the water side, just U of A and U of C, there's not many people, like the Jedi comment I made earlier, there's not many people doing this kind of work. 
well, who's going to take on the work if there's no one there to mentor them? If there's no profs at the U of A or U of C to do courses on this, on this uh, subject matter, how are we going to get kids to get interested and, and get out, um, you know, go to grad school, you know, get their degree and, and get out and become engaged in the community to do this kind of work? Um, in terms of fragmentation of roles and authorities, we need to do things on the watershed scale. Uh, there's some really great things that we can do at the national level. Uh, but even at, the, even at the provincial level, I think that's too high a level for a lot of the stewardship work that we need to do on the ground. I think that does need to be done um, on, a, on a watershed scale. And like we, we, In Alberta, of course, we've got the watershed stewardship groups and the watershed planning and advisory councils. But the rubber hits the road of the watershed stewardship groups. And that's the groups that are the, the, the poorest funded in the province. And that's very disappointing when it, when it comes down to actually getting things done. Uh, in terms of enforcement, uh, one of the things I wanted to bring up too is the enforcement appetite in the province, and we've, we continue to hear that um, where there's no political will, where there's no funding, um, that hammer just doesn't exist. And uh, a lot of the folks I talked to are actually frustrated at not only the fragmentation of roles and responsibilities, but the lack of political will to enforce when there are, you know, uh, riparian work or wetlands drained or things like that that's done along lakes and lake shores. So. Uh, one, of the, one of my DFO colleagues quit uh, was playing hockey with him in the, in, in the wintertime, and I asked, how's the, how's the enforcement business? How are, you keeping, how, are you keeping very busy? And he says, actually, no. He says, we can't afford to put gas in the trucks right now, so we're not doing anything. That's, that's a reality as well. And that's no knock against DFO. It's just on the ground, uh, what's going on. The regionalization I've talked a little bit about. Uh, one of the things I, I thought was very interesting was the, the comment about making a living versus making a killing and getting back to the, the stewardship approach in this province, are a lot of the folks here are just coming here to, to make a living, to get whatever it is out of the ground as quick as possible and get selling it and, and uh, fill your boots. Uh, I think we need to work with that sector in particular um, to instill that stewardship ethic. So there's an, just an education there as well. Uh, Guy also spoke about our, our call for urgency to action. I think that's uh, extremely important as well. Um, one of the things I think that we've heard over and over and over again is people trying to define what stewardship is. Uh, one, of the, one of the guests uh, leaned over and said to me the other day, she said to me, uh, you know, everybody's got their own definition for uh, stewardship. And we came with a, we, we've heard lots of definitions. Um, Pincott said sustainability is inevitable. Sanford said sustainability is irrelevant. Uh, I think with us trying to define, spend so much time defining it, it basically becomes nothing to anybody. So. Um, I thought it would be interesting to see what stewardship meant. I cracked open the new Alberta Land Stewardship Act. I thought, well, geez, it's got to be defined in here. It's not defined. It's not defined in the act at all. So I, I, I'd like to call that to, the, to our SRD folks that are bringing the land use framework out that uh, perhaps they should take a crack at trying to define sustainability. We need to embrace new partners. The church, native spirituality, music, theater, uh, Lauren Fitch used the term a little combat biology. I think those are extremely wise words. Those are, those are in my, my sector, my line of work, those are whole new, whole new challenges, whole new sectors to, to be embraced. And I, I was really excited to, to hear that from some of the speakers as well. And that's uh, continuing to resonate with me. In particular, the, you know, the First Nations beliefs about the native spirituality and, and the, 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 the role of water as a spirit. Um, absolutely is fascinating and I think uh, that, that message needs to get out as well. Um, delivery of, of stewardship occurs at many levels. Uh, we need to make sure we increase our in inclusivity and decrease that fragmentation and again um, working towards that. And also the perception that sustainability is, is an impediment to economic development. We continue to hear that over and over again. I think uh, some, some time and some thought needs to be put into how we can turn that, uh, turn that messaging around. It's absolutely not an impediment to economic development. Uh, every company, every corporation out there now, every corporation, every company out there now is, is selling us on their, their green technology, their sustainability, their, their ethic that they're using. So let's, let's turn it back around on them and, and have them show us what, what exactly are they doing. To, uh, why is this not an impediment to their economic activity? And I think I'll wrap, I'll wrap with that piece right now and uh, turn the mic back over to Guy.